I'm at Highland here in Orlando at DDW 2013, and we are here with Dr. Pratik Sharma. Dr. Sharma is with the uh, University of Kansas Medical School. Thank you so much for joining us here on DDW TV. It's a pleasure to be here. Give us an idea, first of all. Uh, you were talking today about Barrett's, and uh, give us an idea of survey, ablate, or ignore, with a big question mark, was uh, the presentation. Uh, somewhat controversial, I guess, right. because there's a lot of interest and a lot of questions with right. this. No, thank you. Uh, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of controversy around this uh, topic. Uh, the reason we're all interested in it is because uh, the type of cancer that Barrett's esophagus leads to, esophageal adenocarcinoma, is rapidly rising in the country. And so we're trying to grapple with it, trying to figure out, are we doing the right thing? So the question always is, should we survey more? Should we survey less? Uh, should we ablate more? Should we ablate less? And so, uh, you know, I had this controversial topic to address. First and foremost, what's important is what's not Barrett's esophagus. So that's really important because as gastroenterologists, we make the diagnosis. So our recommendation is that in those patients who have a normal appearing squamocolumnar junction or have a slightly irregular squamocolumnar junction or a length which is less than one centimeter, those are really hard to diagnose. There's a hard to biopsy, the biopsies are not accurate. Those patients are best left alone. There's good data to show that these patients have a very low risk of progression, if at all, so they're best left alone. On the other spectrum are those patients with uh, high-grade dysplasia and early cancer. And early cancer means what's limited to the top layer or the mucosa of the esophagus. These patients have the highest risk, and these patients should definitely undergo definitive treatment. Endoscopy has evolved, and now we are to a point where we can endoscopically treat these patients. So those are the patients that should be treated. You can do mucosal resection, you can do radiofrequency ablation. Both therapies work really well. Recurrences can happen, so you want to make sure that you are following these patients after endoscopic therapy has been applied. Somewhere in between are those patients with non-dysplastic Barrett's, where the risk, as we've learned about this disease over the past couple of decades, that the risk is quite low. And at this point, we tend to survey these patients. One of the things that kind of jumped out at me was a very simple suggestion to spend a little more time in the examination process. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, it's the entire concept of can we pick up more dysplasia or cancer just by spending more time? And we got this idea from our colonoscopy colleagues in which the recommendation was that if you spend six minutes or longer withdrawing your endoscope, you can detect more polyps. So we applied that same principle to patients with Barrett's and we found the same thing, that the longer time you spend, you clean the esophagus, look at it carefully, you're more likely to find patients with high-grade dysplasia and cancer. Much more discussion on Barrett's, I'm sure, in the future. Dr. Pratik Sharma, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Right Ed. here on DDW-TV.